Well, good evening, all. I wrap scene with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Monday, the 6th of May, 2024. Interesting day. You know, we were taken aghast this morning that suddenly I thought that Hamas had come to its senses and accepted the deal that the United States, Egypt, Qatar, other parties had gone into Israel with to work out a deal. You even heard say, this is a great deal. Israel's given up a lot for what it wants. It's the first stage. Maybe through it, you can get to a permanent peace. So you heard they signed off on it, and I'm going, you know, I believe Hamas to be total liars. I think they play the press. I think they play people out there to come to their way of thinking. And the thing they'll say is they've agreed to the deal and turn it on Israel. And I read the deal. Early on, the deputy, the second man in Hamas, came out with what the deal was. I think it was on Reuters, in fact. And uh, I listened, to, I read the points, and I'm going, where is the talk there about the Israeli withdrawal and the ceasing of military operations while the deal's going on? He didn't mention any of that. And I wrote in my morning report, there's something that stinks here. Well, later this afternoon, the Wall Street Journal cleared it up. And the reason that the Israeli war cabinet, within minutes, refused the deal and 100% vote, the whole cabinet, go in the Rafa, let's go get them. What the deal had done is Hamas had changed the deal. So it put in back in full withdrawal by Israel, cessation of all military action. Israel pulls out first, gives up everything, and then Hamas will start meeting the points of the deal that they've agreed to. Does that sound to you like the deal that was presented? If you've kept up with this, it wasn't even close. So they are right. It's up to Israel. Israel didn't accept that deal. Israel had a deal on the table. They have to send a negotiator for this Tuesday, for tomorrow, a further meeting, but it, it's a waste of time. It isn't going to happen under those terms. And Israel is proper from their point of view, not from mine, not necessarily from you, from, from their point of view. If we don't hit Rafa now, we, don't, we let the pressure off and they're going to keep going with this pressure. And what they do is when they go in and do their surgical whatever, they wipe out the whole thing. So 100,000 people have been told to move and that's it. The stock market probably tonight backing off a little bit. The euphoria is out of the market. Uh, foreign currency market's down a bit. The dollar should get a bid. It is interesting because you're up in the energies, and that would make all the sense because you put back in some of the war bid. Think about that. You were taking it out. That's one of the things that energies was falling on. Oh, there's talks. Maybe this thing can get done. We've heard this forever. It's the same thing. Hamas refuses to give up, and end of discussion. Israel's out to wipe them out. I am certain they can read it, reach a treaty. I really believe this in my heart. If Hamas leaves Gaza, who's going to take him becomes one of the big issues. Nobody wants him. Number two, nobody's going to let them be as part of the government. So the, what they're holding on to is a dream, and that'll just keep Palestine in a state of flux. When we look at the weekly chart on the S&P, I look back in pretty much amazement that we were talking, if it got down, it should find support at the 18-week average of closes, and it did. The market has certainly left the bear trend. These corrections have run its course for the time being. Obviously, the arguments today are going to be, can this market hold? And are we going to get a summer rally instead of the sell may and go away? I can tell you that's the wording already. You do have higher lows, higher highs, uptrend. The market is over the 18-day average of closes, bullish bias. The resistance is right here at the 52, 12 to 13 area, the upper band, and the market is overbought. So I can make an argument for a pullback, but big support in the 5103 to 5064 level. When I take a look at the NASDAQ, overbought, uptrend, you've really got to get me convinced it's going and staying up to get the 18-day average to crisscross again over the 100. Right now, this has a lot of phony rally written into it. In the June micro mini, lower low, higher high. Now you've got two days and a half, let's call tonight a half, of being over the 100 uh, 
day average, is it able to stay there? This is a pretty big resistance area when you're overbought. And in the micro, Russell, same thing. You're in this area where I think you're going to fight that battle. When you come to the 10-year notes, the market ran into a brick wall. The wall should be the upper Bollinger Band when you're overbought, void of a trend. You have a higher high and a lower low. The five-year note is the same thing. All this occurred when you lost the bearish embedded reading. I talk about this in my morning research videos. I go over it and over it and hammer it into you how important it is. Momentum often leads price. And if you believe that as I do, I'm a real student of that. It, I find, is very, very good. Is it every time it isn't? It isn't. Big moves in a market that come out of left field can make price ahead of momentum. It's rare. You need an event, whatever that event is. You need an event to get that. In the dollar, I think this is now calling for an end of the dollar break right here. That does not mean I'm bearish or bullish. You don't have a trend, but you're into the support and you're oversold. And that means I think the euro is running into a peak right here. We will see. Now, remember, we're already at the 6th of May. June 6th is when the uh, European Central Bank meets. The odds heavily favor they're going to make their first rate cut. So getting a rally now up there, is the market going to stall out on that news? In the British pound, it was a wipeout, as you know, in the elections for the conservatives. And now the question is, will the prime minister be calling an election before parties can get a lot more strength against them? Right now, if the election were called, the results that I read said nobody would get a ruling coalition under their party right now. So it's going to be interesting politics. A series of reports are about to come out now in the UK from the bank, and we're expecting that the market has left its recession, and the current report is expected to show growth in the GDP, leaving the recessionary time. In Bitcoin, you are up to the 18-day average of closes, lower and low, higher high, fighting a battle right here. Here's what I think. This correction that wasn't the hardest one. Remember, I told you, having rarely works. Got down to the lower Bollinger Band, and I think you mark on your charts that that's probably uh, the low of this break. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I think that's about it. And the fact that the market broke the bearish pattern now means it's going to churn. If it wanted to rally, you can get back to the 6,900 level. But that's what I think is going to happen. And remember, each day that goes by now and you're mining a coin, you got to mine it twice as much of your cost, twice as much of your computer power, everything to get one, uh, one more coin. So this is the design of that, less supply. And plenty of demand. A lot of people now view it as an asset class. Brent versus WTI oil sitting here. Why would this collapse now? Now you're back to the situation in the Red Sea where the Houthis, why would they let up on anything they're doing? I read a report today and the ships on December 18th, all these companies that had rerouted, they haven't come back and they're not going to under the current situation. Makes no sense, all right? So everything's going around Africa. The costs are crazy. Uh, less ships available because there's more of the same amount of ships out at sea longer. So that's another issue. In Brent, you can see you're still in a downtrend. Slowness in the market. Yes, same thing in WTI. But I've mentioned to you, I think you've got big support at the 100-day the 200-day average, the gray and the green, and the Bollinger Band. And you have an OPEC meeting right around the corner. At this price level, do you honestly think there or in Brent here, OPEC's going to say at these prices, yeah, let's release more production? Okay, I'm not in that camp. Gasoline has not rallied. It has been one of these markets that if you're looking for that spring rally, it hasn't come. Now, there is a rally date right around the corner. It's mid-month where the market seasonally picks up, but it only goes up into the latter part of May on this particular rally. We're not there, but we could be setting it up. We're oversold down to key numbers. I doubt in this environment you're going to get and stay under 253 to the 250 area. These two uh, averages, you could, but I have my doubts about it. It's a lot of support. And in that gas, you got up on Friday. You made your high into the 100-day average. For me, that's enough. I think the market is saying it's making a base. 
I'm not saying the word top anymore, making a base. And I think on hard breaks, you wanna be a buyer again with stops under the most recent low. Now, I talk about this in a heck of a lot more every morning, whether you trade futures, stocks, spiders, or ETFs, in my morning videos. Now, those videos are where I cover charts that look this way, and there's plenty of them. So we're gonna talk fundamental news. We're gonna talk technical. I showed you the web page and where they look like there. All the charts will look in this manner. They'll have a black background, a lot more studies, and I teach you as we go, and we make market calls. So I'll do that. I'll tell you what it is. I get people that write me and they'll say, Ira, is this, this, this? I answer you back. I devote a certain amount of time to that every single day. Points of entry, exit, profit objective, stops, ideas on where they should be, lost momentum, all that coming together. irapstein.com research, just go there and that's where it's all at. You can also move your cursor to the top here and join me that way. I'm Ira Epstein. You have yourself a great evening. I'll catch up with you in the morning.